Hello and welcome to this video on how to assess convergent and discriminant validity based on a multi-trait, multi-method matrix. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually have a video that is related to issues in the Mplus software and on Thursdays I address more general issues in multivariate statistics. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter. In this video I want to talk about the criteria that have been proposed by Campbell and Fisk in 1959 for evaluating their multi-trade multi-method matrix. I have a separate video here on this channel in which I discuss the components of a multi-trade multi-method matrix in detail. So if you're not yet familiar with that framework, with what we um, have in a multi-trade multi-method matrix, then please check out this video first. It is linked below in the description. Here in this video, I want to focus on the actual criteria that Campbell and Fisk proposed for evaluating convergent and discriminant validity based on a multi-trait, multi-method matrix. And in their 1959 Psychological Bulletin article, they proposed four different criteria that I am going to present first, and then I'm going to walk you through uh, my example, multi-trait, multi-method matrix, to show you how these criteria can be applied um, to an actual matrix. So the first criterion that Campbell and Fisk proposed in their article was that the monotrait heteromethod correlations should be statistically significantly different from zero and sufficiently large. Remember that the monotrait heteromethod correlations are related to convergent validity because they are correlations between variables that represent the same trait but are measured by different methods. And so those correlations should be high, they should be strong to indicate that there's convergence between different methods for the same trait. The second criterion is also about the monotrait heteromethod correlations and it states that those should be larger than the corresponding column and row values in the surrounding heterotrait heteromethod triangle. So that sounds fairly complicated and so we will understand this better when I show you the actual matrix and I show you how that criterion is applied. The third criterion is also about the monotrait heteromethod correlations and states that those correlations for a given variable should be larger than the corresponding heterotrait monomethod values. And then finally, the fourth criterion that you'll find in this article is that the pattern of trait intercorrelations should be similar in each heterotrait triangle in both the mono and heteromethod cases. And so that also sounds pretty complicated. So let's walk through these criteria one by one based on an example and see how they can be applied. So let's start with the first criterion. The monotrait heteromethod correlations should be statistically significantly different from zero and sufficiently large. So that's fairly straightforward to understand. Let's take a look at this here in our example, MTMM matrix, where we have three traits, depression, anxiety, and competences. And we have three different methods, self ratings of children, peer ratings of children, and parent ratings of the children. And I highlighted the um, monotrait heteromethod correlations here in these sub diagonals so that you can see them more easily. So those are uh, correlations between the same trait, therefore monotrait, but for different methods, therefore heteromethod. And so you can see, for example, that the correlation between depression self-reports and depression peer nominations was 0.20. That's not very good. Yeah? So remember the first criterion states that those should be statistically significant and sufficiently large because obviously different methods should show agreement for convergent validity. Um, and that should be indicated by strong correlations that should be statistically significant. You can see when you look at those nine correlations here in this matrix that they're all pretty modest. The largest one is 0.43 for competence ratings 
um, between peers and parent reports. So that is relatively sizable, but there's not really any extremely strong correlation here. But given that it's the same trade, um, we would maybe expect something that is closer to, um, I don't know, ideally 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So that would be ideal for convergent validity to have a strong correlation. And so these are all pretty modest. Now, they are statistically significant with the exception of probably this correlation of 0.12. So remember that statistical significance is not really a very good criterion um, statistically because it depends mostly on sample size, whether you have enough power to detect that a correlation is significant. And so in a huge sample, even a correlation of 0.12 would probably be found to be statistically significantly different from zero, but that doesn't mean very much. So more important is the portion of the criterion that states that these should be sufficiently large. And um, Campbell and Fisk provide no further guidance in their article as to what sufficiently large means. But here we could say those aren't very large. And so this is something that would then indicate that convergent validity is not very good in terms of this criterion. Why? Probably because these traits are difficult to assess by observers. So depression and anxiety are about internalizing problems or internalizing behaviors that are often not so visible. And so it's maybe difficult for peers and parents to find out whether a child is depressed or just introverted and quiet or whether a child is anxious. Anxiety is something that is not so easy to see. And so that in that is uh, reflected here in the fact that especially for depression and anxiety, we have fairly low correlations here for the mono trait hetero method value. So with regard to the first criterion, we could say statistically significant. They these correlations probably all are statistically significant given a large enough sample size. But are they sufficiently large? We could say probably not. They're not ideal in terms of their magnitude. Now let's take a look at the second criterion, which states that the monotrade hetero method correlations should be larger than the corresponding column and row values in the surrounding hetero trade hetero method triangle. So that's a more complicated issue. So let's take a look at that, what um, this um, comparison is about. So um, remember that the uh, convergent validity coefficients, the mono trade hetero method values are in these sub diagonals that um, are here surrounded by triangles and the triangles here in this um, illustration indicate the hetero trade hetero method values. And so this criterion then is also about convergent validity, but it's a more minimal, so to say, criterion because the surround, it's about the comparison between the mono trade hetero method values, which indicate convergent validity with the hetero trade hetero method values, which indicate discriminant validity, where the variables have neither trade nor method in common. And so it's a very minimal comparison, so to say, to say, oh, at least those convergent validity coefficients the mono trade hetero method values should at least be larger than the hetero trade hetero method values, which have neither trade nor method in common. And so there should really not be much there. And so then, so say this is a baseline comparison. And here you can see even that comparison doesn't look extremely good because the mono trade hetero method values in these sub diagonals here don't really clearly stick out against the values that are in the surrounding triangles. They're not really that much larger with the exception maybe again of this correlation of 0.43 here, which is clearly larger than all of the correlations that are in these triangles. But really many of these aren't much larger than, um, than the surrounding values in the triangles. For example, when you look at this um, sub diagonal here for self reports versus peer reports, you can see that the surrounding values are actually similar in magnitude. So this is again a criterion also about convergent validity and it's a little bit softer maybe um, than the previous criterion because 
um, really there shouldn't be um, shouldn't or there, there should really be a clearly a clear difference between those values in those sub diagonals versus the triangles that surround them that's a pretty minimal um, criterion and so here this is also not ideal the third criterion is again also about convergent validity and now this is um, also about a comparison and so in this case we are comparing the monotrade hetero method correlations to the corresponding hetero trade mono method value so what does that mean let's take a look at this also what are the hetero trade mono method values again and i highlighted them here in this example by um, triangles again so you can see those triangles now indicate the hetero trade mono method values meaning correlations within the same method for different trades which indicate discriminant validity and so those then again shouldn't be so high relative to the mono trade hetero method values because they don't share the same trade they only share the same method and so those shouldn't be higher than the correlations for the same trade but different methods so that's why this makes sense so often these um, hetero trade mono method values are high like in this case those are actually the highest correlations in this mtmm matrix on average so to say um, with the exception there are a few that are smaller than a few of the values here but in general you can see those are pretty strong 0 0.67 negative 0 0.55 0 0.65 0 0.67 and so on so and that's often the case because oftentimes we have high correlations within the same method for different traits because of so-called halo effects rater effects shared method variants um, method bias and so on so that's what's indicated by these hetero trade mono method values they allow us to look at discriminant validity high correlations would indicate a lack of discriminant validity and so we're basically now comparing the discriminant validity coefficients to the um, convergent validity coefficients and we want of course the convergent validity coefficients to be higher than the correlations that indicate discriminant validity and so that again here is not fulfilled this criterion is not um, what we are it's, this doesn't look like the way what we would like it to look because those convergent validity coefficients in the sub diagonals here are on average smaller clearly smaller than those discriminant validity coefficients in the mono method triangles and so that's also not ideal but it's typical um, for a lot of mtmm matrices in the social sciences in particular in psychology when you look at attributes that are more covert that are more about internal feelings emotions something that is not as clearly visible to outside observers then we don't we often don't find good convergent validity and we find high method effects meaning um, halo biases rater effects that are indicated by those hetero trade mono method triangles and then lastly our fourth criterion that campbell and fisk proposed is that the pattern of trade intercorrelations should be similar in each hetero trade triangle in both the mono and hetero method cases so this is the only criterion that is about discriminant validity because it concerns only the hetero trade correlations not the mono trade hetero method correlations so whereas so say the first three criteria are all about convergent validity the last criterion is about discriminant validity and it's really the only um, one that they proposed and so let's look at that so here we have those triangles again that indicate hetero trade hetero method correlations so variables that share neither trade nor method in common and so those should be the lowest correlations obviously because they um, shouldn't have the shared rater bias in them and they shouldn't have uh, and, and there should be discriminant validity between different trades so those should be the lowest ones and then here those are the um, discriminant validity coefficients within a given method the um, hetero trade mono method values again and those also shouldn't be too high for discriminant 
validity. And so now this criterion, though, is not about the magnitude of those correlations, but this criterion is about the pattern of intercorrelations, which means that depression and anxiety, for example, should show a similarly high correlation across raters, which here is the case. So you can see that um, for self-reports, the correlation is 0.67. For peer uh, nominations, it's 0.65. And for parent reports, it's 0.67. Again, so that's very similar. And then also the other correlations with competence are similar in magnitude for the most part um, when we look at the um, mono method case. For the hetero method case, we can see that the correlations are lower, which would be expected because there's then no shared rater effect. And you can see the patterns are also similar, roughly speaking. So we have those intercorrelations and their signs are about the same magnitude. So this is something that here is partly at least fulfilled this last criterion that we sh that the traits so say have the same pattern of correlations why is this important well, it's important because we would expect that each type of rater in particular returns the same um, conclusions or allows us to draw the same conclusions about how different constructs are related and that would be the case so whether here in this example. So whether we use the self-report or whether we use a peer report or parent report, each time we would come to um, roughly similar conclusions about how depression and anxiety are related, for example, or how depression is related to competence. And so that's then, so say, an important issue regarding discriminant validity of, we would come to the same conclusion regarding discriminant validity, rega regardless of which type of rater we would use here. Now there's no criterion with regard to discriminant validity proposed by Campbell and Fisk that exactly would tell us how large they should be and I think Campbell and Fisk didn't make a recommendation in this regard because it really depends on the type of construct that you're looking at. When you look at closely related constructs such as depression and anxiety, you would not expect that the correlation should be close to zero for discriminant validity. That wouldn't be your expectation because clearly they are comorbid, clearly um, people who are depressed tend, tend to also be anxious on average. And so there's a tendency for those constructs to be strongly correlated. We cannot expect a zero correlation for discriminant validity. But for other constructs, you might expect that. So you have maybe other constructs where your theory predicts that they should be completely unrelated or nearly unrelated. And then you would have different expectations for discriminant validity. And so therefore, um, Campbell and Fisk didn't make any concrete recommendations as to how low those correlations need to be for discriminant validity in the same way as they also didn't make explicit size recommendations for convergent validity coefficients and they merely said yeah those should be substantial in size and statistically significant but they didn't say um, exactly how large they need to be because again it depends on the circumstances certain methods just simply may not show um, perfect agreement or very high agreement because things might be different to observe or different raters might show different perspectives might provide different perspectives on a construct where we couldn't expect those correlations to be near Perfect. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about the multi-trait, multi-method approach and the assessment of convergent and discriminant validity with this approach. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section, and please check out the description for additional resources, including a workshop that I give on multi-rater analysis using confirmatory factor analysis. This is something, this is a method that we now use more frequently for analyzing MTMM data. And you can learn something about this approach in my workshop if you like. And I'll see you next week.